a very special thank you to everybody who tunes in to the Justin Podcast. And I also want to give a special thanks to all my sponsors. Introducing the Edible Bubbles Kit. Use your favorite delicious drink to blow tasty bubbles that are designed to be devoured. Each bottle is partially filled with a non-toxic bubble solution. Whoa. Simply add your favorite beverage to the mix. Gently shake and use the enclosed bubble wand to start creating your own floating flavored treats. Get your kit today for only $11.99. To order your kit, just call 1-800-476-1991. He's considered to be the greatest announcer in XTV history. And now, Justin Turkey Lane brings his famous voice along with his awesome friends to the podcast world. This is Justin's Podcast. Welcome to Justice Podcast, ladies and gentlemen. I am your host. I'm not going to sit up there and tell you who I am because you know who I am. I ain't gonna, I ain't, no, I'm growing. I'm growing. I'm learning from my mistakes. Of course, you see it. David B. Boy and Sketch are my guests as promised. I'm going to get with those guys momentarily. Uh, I think it was a couple weekends ago I actually sat with B-Boy and Sketch. Or maybe it was last weekend. You you know, I mean, you know, everything's starting to run together. You know, the, the more stuff we doing, you know, uh, <laughs> the more crazy it get, right? A few things on my mind this week. Uh, I don't know. I, I don't really know how to feel about the release of J-Love. But, uh, you know, here's the thing. He, uh, th- th- this is this is a situation where you know, and and, I, and I've talked to you know J and W Boss about this, and I I don't really, you know, know how he has moved forward, you know, uh, with this, you know, but I I know that you know anytime, you know, somebody might be a little ornery or unruly, uh, you know, with him, you know, he he got a way of just you know, hey, there's the door, you know, your car can get the hell off my show. And we feel the same way about people who, you know, don't really communicate with us. Especially when we reaching out, you know what I mean? And then when they have reached out to us and, and they wanted their guy on on the show, you know, it's like, okay, that's fine. Because we don't turn anybody down, you know. We, we open arms to everybody, any and everybody, you know what I mean? Because that's it's helping us grow. That's the way we see it. But at the same time... You know, it's not really helping us grow if you're not even a fan of the show. You don't have to be a fan of the show. You don't have to like the show. That's not what we're asking for. But, I mean, if, you, if you're not, you know, even going to, uh, you know, see how your car is being used, then what is the point of having him on the show? And, you know, we were willing to look over that. You know, it was like, you know, you don't have the one on our show, like we said. You know, uh, we, was, uh, we, we felt like J-Love needed some um he, he he needed something more to make him pop you know to make him stand out to make people remember him and say oh yeah that's that guy that does dot 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 and so uh that was the whole point of us uh going to the creation suite with haven you know uh who was recently uh on creation suite and uh i, I think i think that we got some good stuff out of that um that is gonna you know take us you know, somewhere with Haven, and you know, she was going. She was going to be with him. She was going to be, you know, his manager. You know, his, his mouthpiece uh, mostly. But um, you know, we just reached out to uh, J Love. Well, I did personally. I reached out to him uh, on Facebook, and I, I hit him up in Messenger. Uh, in Messenger, and, and I know that he's seen my message because it had left a blue check mark that said, "Oh yeah, this person seen this." And uh, basically, I was ignored when I asked him, you know, what does he think would be good music for, for J-Love? You know, I'm still waiting on the answer. And, you know, I'm not going to hold my breath on that. But, you know, I, I just feel like we got another Adrian Knight on our hands. And it's, it's, it's strange to me, you know, uh, this behavior, you know, and, and, and I'm not going to bug the man. I'm not going to, you know, inquire again, you know. Uh, and But it's just the, like, it's strange to me that, uh, that 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 would be the type of behavior because you know when he was informed that J Love would be on uh, on the game, you know he was thrilled, you know, and he said that he appreciated and that it that it meant a lot to him. 
And I was like, man, look at look at HTV. Making dreams come true for somebody. You know, uh, fairly popular guy, too. Uh, you know, he used the last hashtag love up. And, you know, maybe, maybe, maybe you'll find something to do with J-Love on your show. But his services are no longer needed here in HTV. You know what I mean? Since, uh, you know... Because uh, you know we just we just trying to we just trying to build them up and it's just like you know in my opinion it's a, it's a waste of space you know we can be developing our own guy why why are we gonna develop somebody else guy who you know what I'm saying not gonna put the same amount of effort and time and, and care into us so that's 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 the decision with that and so you know it, it's good that it happened before we got the entire act on TV but even if so you know we'll just you know we we'll, would have found something else. Uh, so, it's come down to two other prospects that, you know, Haven will be accompanying, and whatever, the, the gimmick that we was going to give to Jay Love, we'll just give it, uh, to one of these two gentlemen, who, uh, we'll probably be seeing, you know, in the very near future. I'm really, uh, happy about the way NXTV is developing. Uh, we just sound, signed a new star, uh, Johnny Evil, and you might have seen him on Proving Grounds. Uh, created by Third Strike ENT, and uh, you know it was it was a uh, Third Strike who came up with the name Father Evil, seeing as you know we do have Johnny Money. So I'm interested in seeing you know how he's gonna work out. Um, big big plans for him, man. You know he could be a big time deal, and you know same thing with Manny Al, you know uh, waiting waiting on his debut. So you see. You know, we got all these guys, you know, right there on the horizon about to come in. And, and, and that's what NXTV is all about. You know, some big things, some big transitions are about to happen over the next several months. You know, and, uh, you know, it's unfortunate with the J-Love thing. Because I understand that, you know, on NXTV's behalf, we did take forever to damn get the guy in. And, you know, uh, but I mean, you know, NXTV's defense, I mean, you know, we, we didn't know that Worlds Collide was going to happen and, you know, all these different things, you know, that had to get postponed. It's like, you know, forget all that. We finna work on this, <laughs> you know. And uh, so when that happened, you know, everything got thrown off. Even our own plans got pushed back, like Big Trap having to, uh, you know, um, lose to, you know, King Kong. And then, you know, how that loser leaves thing. We was trying to get Big Trap o over to the main roster. You know, that's what that was all about. And then um, uh, getting the championship off of King Kong. And, you know, even though that came later, but... It's just everything got shifted, you know. Stories had to get told. We were trying to get to a place, and, um, you know, that that's why, you know, you're just not seeing Shannon become the champion. Shannon should have been the champion probably like a year ago, honestly. You know, but like I said, you know, just things happen that you don't expect. You want, you, you want to get to a certain place, and you just kind of got to go along the road that, uh, that, 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 that this course takes you on. You know, you know, sometimes your hands are tied, but... You know, a promise is a promise. We we will get you in. If we say we're going to get you in, you will be on the show. But, uh, you know, cooperate with us. Or at least watch your part. You know, give us some kind of feedback. That's all we was trying to do. Involve you. But, you know, no hard feelings. It's just that, you know, it's just no no point, you know, in my opinion, of, uh, of, of moving forward. Um... We got, of course, the uh, big pay-per-view. Probably, you know, this might be the biggest show of the year. You know, the you know the the way this has been built, you know, uh, especially in its own unique way. Uh, what I'm talking about, Miami beatdown. You know, that, that's something crazy, man. You know, uh, we got Pain versus we got Pain versus Killer. I feel like, you know, as of late, Killer's done a great job at being a piece of shit heel. I punched him in the stomach the other day on Creation Suite. One of them episodes, I think it was uh, the B-Boy one. Yeah, because, you know, he's just been a little pain in the ass. And, you know, this thing, y'all, I, I remember when he had, uh, when he first, you know, uh, was like doing the Cosby stuff and he was, uh, you know, in the director's chair and things like that. He wasn't on XTV a lot. And, you know, I think that's the only time that he was a legit and true babyface is when, you know, he was not around. When he came back around, we remember why we ain't like his ass in the first place. All hell broke loose. 
And he got that damn little shit eating grin on his face. You know, he ain't got no shame about it. And, you know, so, you know, there's that. And, you know, now people want to see Payne kick his ass. The match never got stale in all the five years or however long it's been. You know, this was announced forever ago. It was supposed to take place at an XTV Mania. We ain't had an XTV Mania since 2013. But it's going down at Miami Beatdown. I personally think, which I have no control over, but I think it should be the main event. I think it should go on last. I think that Dean versus 80s, you know, should probably go on first, you know, um, you know, because I think it's gonna, only going to be like a, a handful of matches, you know, uh, or a handful of events. I, that, that, that's what I would call this, you know, the events, because there's there's several things going on on this. And so I think it should be built something like that, maybe like the Olympics and not necessarily, you know, a wrestling presentation. But again, you know, these are just my ideas because, you know, it is something different. And, you know, I, I feel like the West, the West Side should focus on, uh, uh, you know, being completely different from what the East does. And, you know, I think they, uh, with, in the same breath, they naturally uh, come across as being different. HTV05. Also on the horizon, we got our big five matches. Um, don't ask me to name them all, but you know I, I know we got the, the championship. It's gonna be Charles Dean going up against R.J. Miles. Everybody remember several months ago, R.J. Miles went in the World Rumble, and uh, so he's got his opportunity in the bag. R.J. Miles has done just fine here in XTV. You know uh, he's not on every week. You know he sees many uh, different. You know, he's in many other different leagues. And so, uh, you know, you got to uh, you gotta account for that. But he always wins. You know, here in XTV, RJ is undefeated. Nobody ever beat him. He beat Millennium. He, he did uh, the majority of the work in this uh, tag team match that he had uh, with, with RJ. And they went up against the New Day in the longest match in Twitch history. God, it was like 20 minutes or something. 25, 30 minutes is like, Jesus Christ, when is this going to be over? It had some great spots, and RJ did his stuff. You know, uh, I haven't went back to watch it. It's probably one of the lowest viewed uh, shows. It's like, it's like, it's like people can sense it. Like, nah, I ain't going to watch that piece of shit. You know, that's the, that's the risk you run when you go live. You know, no net, no net. What, what I'm supposed to do, hit pause and restart? I see people do that. I hate that. You don't. You don't. You don't restart the match. But of course, you know everybody's uh, everybody's viewpoint on the way a car universe should be ran is not XTVs. You know. You know. Uh, we we try to make it feel real. We try to make it feel like this is really happening. And when you hit pause, you know, at least for me, that just takes you out of the whole game. You know. And. Uh, Sometimes, you know, if you work real hard, you can pull them back in it. Or, or if you guys, you know, if, if you hit a fever pitch and somebody hit pause by accident, you can play it off and you go right back into it. That might, that might have happened on a couple East meets West, you know, where the momentum is built up, you know, high enough to where if, if something like, a, you know, uh, somebody hit, you know, the, the pause button or something like that, the share button, whatever the case may be, by mistake, you can jump back in it. And you know, keep that same momentum going, but I just think that really throws it off, and it really does it. You know, when people do it on purpose and say, "Oh, hold on, let me reset." Do what? Lose my voice messing around. So yeah, man, that's pretty much what's on my mind uh, this week on Justin's podcast. History. New segment that I would like to uh, introduce. Here on Justice Podcast. It's called uh, This Month in XTV History. And, uh, you know, I, I, I feel like XTV don't have enough online history to, you know, have uh, This Week in History. But we do got quite a bit of stuff all over the internet whereby we can have uh, This Month in History. And, hey, you know, there's probably so much stuff that maybe I'm even missing some things. But I think this is quite an intriguing list. Uh, this month in XTV history, uh, March 27th, 2017, uh, Justin's podcast, Kareem and Jordan Strong, uh, was released. So that's, 
you know, pretty crazy for me myself, you know, I, you know, and, and and I'm I'm thinking about it, and I'm wondering, you know, how how much further along, how much have those two improved, you know, since that time period? It's, uh, it's probably uh, overdue for them to come back. When you say on March 29, two thousand and two, the Bricks made its uh, final episode. Uh, I think that's right here on XTV East Coast. And uh, I think we've been working on a Bricks uh, playlist. A lot of guys on the West Side still big fans of the Bricks. You know, uh, NXTV has not taken the Bricks place. I think that uh, I think you just had to be there, and uh, it lives in it lives in our hearts. It's, it's it's definitely funny stuff, and it's interesting seeing certain stars like you know King Kong and where he was. He was a man's flunky at the time, and now he ended up uh, being you know the leader of the NWN. Crazy how things happen. March 17, 2012, Wells defeated Black Blood in a last man standing match. Yes, you heard me right. Wells. Joe Wells defeated Black Blood in a last man standing match. And uh, he'll let you know about it. Trust me. March 14, 2013, Killer That Nigga's bootleg dropped. That was his, uh, his uh, comedy um, special. I think that was uh, I think that's on Tony B T V. T O N Y B E T V. Uh and I think that was his second comedy special. Shout out to the killer. Big match he got coming up against the pain. Look forward to that. Uh also this uh month in history over on channel TXG Jungle Fever Part Six. The uh, six part, you know, during this time, you know, the West uh, West Side was working on uh, this movie, uh, movie spoof, I should say, of Jungle Fever. If you know anything about that, it's a movie from the 90s, Eddie Murphy. No, no, who, no, that was uh, Wesley Snipes in that one. Yeah, Wesley Snipes. I'm thinking about uh, Boomerang with Eddie Murphy. But Wesley Snipes was in it, Spike Lee, you know, uh, Holly Berry, I think. I want to say Holly Berry. I could be I could be all off, but anyways though, you know it it, it was it was quite a few guests, cause I, I think I think I'm saying Holly Berry, cause I keep on getting that mixed up with damn Boomerang, but anyways this is Jungle Fever, and uh you know Walt played as Skipper, Tavari Howard was in it he played as uh I, I don't remember what his name was I think it was Silas or something like that, and yeah it, it's a fun movie I'm telling you man it's uh it it didn't get finished because of the passing of Miss Ruby D. And, uh, you know, it's unfortunate, but, you know, Big Trunks is in it. It's, a, it's, it's fun stuff. Jungle Fever. You can also check that out on Tony B E T V. Ten years ago, Channel XTV released Bobby vs. Moonsault Kid. That went down uh, March 8th, 2009. Uh, along with Yaki vs. 80s Guy. And Miss Foxy Hot and David B-Boy vs. 80s Guy and Bess. Uh, those are some releases on March 8th and 9th from Channel TXG. I don't think nothing ever goes up on that channel anymore. We're not we're not TXG no more. And, you know, uh, full disclosure, nobody knows the password. So, uh, yeah, you know, uh, fun stuff, man. I mean, you know, think about it. You know, and, and this, I guess this marks the anniversary. You know, I think February marked the 10-year the anniversary that XTV has been digital. I think that I, I, if I'm remembering correctly, I think that XTV um, and, and, and no channel THG was the original uh, XTV East Coast. XTV East Coast was created to have you know pretty much only East Coast content. You know, uh, we used to share a channel, and, and I think what, what what it was is that when the bricks came out, we didn't just want to you know overload channel THG with you know all of our stuff, so we just made. You know, our own channel, XTV East Coast, which then you saw XTV West Side do the same thing. And so there you have it. And so neither one of us are on channel TXG. But uh, channel, T uh, channel TXG is still up. And it's got a whole lot of fun stuff. You know, uh, some of the things that I mentioned, uh, the story of SIDE is on there. Um, a lot of um, highlight videos from pay-per-views, classic matches, 80s guy versus Bob, 
you know, uh, I think it's David Kidd Jr. versus Yaki, uh, Foxy versus Ada, Mr. and Mrs. Pac-Man versus Gaylene and Bo, which if you want to laugh your ass off, uh, I, I, you have been forewarned now about the, about the quality, but uh, it's some good stuff, uh, you know, uh, basketball games, you know, little skits, a THG Christmas, Funky Town, a plethora of things over there on Channel THG, and it's fun to go back and see these characters, you know, uh, 10 years ago, it's crazy. You know, uh, they got the Bobby Kane jump on there, another day at work. So many things, man. It's, it's a lot of fun uh, going back and checking out Channel THG. But again, like I said, you know, the quality is uh, very poor. But yeah, man, that's uh, something that I wanted to try out here. And uh, we're going to do this, uh, you know, on episodes moving forward. Saying as, you know, it ain't like I drop every week. So I don't need to drop this week in history. I'll just drop this month in history. And that is this month in history. Justin Fox. here with uh, two, two bloody mites. <laughs> B-Boy and Sketch. How you boys doing? We're good, we're good. Comfortable? I'm good now. I'm not, I'm not high this time. That's, that's good to know. You know, it, it, it's because of your sister, B-Boy. I, I, I feel like, you know, Sketch is probably the best influence on David B-Boy. You know, think about it. You know, people who've been around in XTV, just think about that for instance. You know, anytime B Boy was around uh, Millennium or, you know, all these other guys, you know, he was always just getting high, getting loaded. You know, when he was around Yaki and all them, he get around Sketch, he working out. You know what I'm saying? He come here, you know, clear headed. <laughs> I'm the one high. What did I say, man? You know, you know I, we both really believe in the team. And um, the tag team aspect of things. So, you know, I think that that's, you know, a heavy mentality going into things. We, we both realized that um, to make this work, because, like, when I came to sketch with this plan to be, you know, British Airways and, you know, just be this tag team phenomenon, which... It's been okay. It's, 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 been, it's been good. It's been good. You know, it's been a fun ride. But... I just wish there were more teams for us to work with that, you know, we could really thrive in what we were, you know, believing in. Because, you know, in my vision was that we would be amongst other popular tag teams. And, you know, that was like, you know, I promise with, you know, Taurus and Aaron and, you know, uh, Green 1 and 2 and um, there was several others that there was, you know, um, originally thought of in NXTV that sort of, you know, didn't really pan out because, um, I think because of the you know the five match thing you know and it's like some that a whole lot of people fight against in the back is that you know there's only five matches on NXT TV and like people feel like there should be more. I definitely feel like there should be more like, and you know it's like they've done six but you know six has been the limit and it, it shouldn't be like that. It should be you know what's necessary for that for for that particular episode. You know it's like a lot of times you know there's like a whole lot of backstage segments and this or that that's taking place and and place of that could be you know TV time you know what I mean somebody's matchup you know you take up the whole skew of what these guys are doing backstage and you know you think about it that could be somebody's match time whether it's only like five minutes or something like that you know well, whether we're whether we, you know, winning or losing you know I think people finally you know kind of get b-boy and sketch and you know, it's all settled in and it's part of, you know, the NXTV DNA, you know, it's kind of embedded. You know, you know, you, you kind of hit the nail right there on the head. I mean, you think about the time period that you guys have been here, you know, in XTV and, uh, or in, in, in XTV. And, I mean, do you think about, like, where to go moving forward? I mean, you know, how, how much longer does British Airways you know, stay British Airways. Honestly, I feel like I feel like um, British Airways is going to always be British Airways. I think, you know, I think we've arrived. I think that, you know, this is the time where we just we just elevate. You know, who we are, who British Airways is, and um. That's what, that's what it is, you know? It's just like 
it breaks down to time because you know we're missing the opportunity. You know, um, because a lot of teams out there really, you know, appreciate what we do in the ring and you know on the um, on the show and things like that. And you know they want you know British Airways to be a part of their team. And yeah, we've gotten plenty of offers from different companies saying you know they want us to be in a tag team tournament and you know this or that. And there's always someone you know in XTV you know in the back going you know don't do that you know. They, you know, XTV guys don't get over in the other leagues and, you know, things of that nature. But it's just the opportunity. Exactly, the opportunity to go out there and, you know, be exposed to a broad audience who's never seen us before. Right, so, you know, it was always, like, you know, two years in a row we missed, like, someone had, like, I had a Dusty Rolls tag team tournament, you know, and they saw, like, some pictures of us on Facebook. And, they, you know, they were really intrigued. Um, Something like, um... Whenever we were um, backstage together, uh, for um, for uh, Spike and then Burns, yeah, and we, we were kind of doing like a uh, a face to face, right? So it was like a you know still image of Facebook, and you know they asked if we were a tag team, you know, you know we responded like yes, and they wanted us to be a part of the tag team classic, and we missed it. I was like screw it, then you know they came back with it again. We're like, are oh, you going to be on 2K19? And, you know, we're like, yeah. And our cons are bullshit, you know, where, uh, you know, people could not be made in a timely fashion. So, you know, let's got shit on again. It's like, you know, really shit, you know, the way they've been, um, you know, treating the tag team division. And it's, you know, if you look at it, you know, it's like a trend in wrestling, like, all the way around. You know, in my opinion, from what I've seen, you know, it's not until like today, in modern day, they're starting to, you know, really appreciate tag team wrestling and, you know, how like important it is to a match card, you know. Um, I think the truth is, you know, not, not to cut you, but the reason that a whole lot of people, you know, are sort of sour on tag team matches, and like when you look at it, you know, even, you know, in the gameplay, you know, there's, like, all the boos and, you know, things like that. I hate that shit. You know, but, you know, it's like, you know, we look at it, like, as an opportunity because there's, that's an opportunity for, you know, the you turn to us, us into chairs. You know, I've literally seen that legit happen. We've we've had that where that's happened, you know, a few times where, you know, they would, you know, return, you know, back to how they were, you know, they would be so, you know, like... Enter the match, and then, and then you have those, you know, those douchebag fans who, you know, no matter what, are going to, you know, try and take over the show. But, you know, it's like when you're in the ring, you know, there's no noise. You know, there's just the music that you create, and the fact that they're making, you know, um, you know, the, the fact that they have any sort of investment at all, you know, is um, is the true reward. You know, how they, however they choose to react. It's like, you came, it's like Killer was saying, you know, he was struggling, you know, to say it uh, on the West Side Live, but, you know, how you going to come to a battle, man? You know what I'm saying? Right. But, uh, and I, I forgot, you know, B-Boy, you used to battle. I still battle. I, I still write lyrics. So if anyone wants to get in the ring verbally, I will take it there, too. Oh, my gosh. Right. Who you went against? Ten light? Yeah, I did. and defeated him. They said that I won. Uh, you can check that out on XTV East Coast. David B Boy versus Ten Light. So, quite fascinating. It was a different time, a different time, different time indeed. You know, it's uh interesting how you know you got Sketch and you know Sketch, you about as as over as over can be. But you know, uh, at the same time. Your usage in NXT TV has, you know, I don't know, just from my perspective, you know, you got like so much promise and I really feel like you've been misused and treated like a mid carder when you're a main eventer. Um, yeah, you know, I appreciate that statement, but the truth is, is that, you know, I think that different things are taking priority and I had a I had a um, meeting because you know people have said this you know to me 
and they said, you know, sketch, you know, you're so much better, you know, maybe you should, like, think about, you know, changing companies or, or di different things like this and that, you know, and I totally don't take it that way because I understand, you know, the method and the, the mindset behind, you know, where NXTV wants to go, wants to be, you know, because we all, you know, are together um, as, you know, classmates and, you know, we all throw out ideas and, you know, we all listen um, to each other's thoughts, you know, it's still, you know, a part of what we have to do and it's a team effort and, you know, everyone's, um, you know, getting on the same page or, you know, trying to get on the same page and it's an understanding, you know, from my perspective that, you know, you'll have your time, you know, and to me, you know, I've already had my time, and the way I the way I did it was not, you know, um, it was not good enough for me in my perspective. As far as like my championship run and just the whole thing, you know, the, the steel cage match, and it was just all just shit, you know, it was just shit. It was a shit title run, and you know, it was it, it was not like, shit. You know, it, it, it was shit. It, it wasn't was shit, shit, man. You know, because that title match got you over. When you wrestled up, up against Tyrone Andre, that sh that really set you off. That really took you to another you know, stratosphere. I, I mean, there were probably you know good parts of it. There were probably good matches or whatever, but you know, it just was not. It could have been so much better. You know, you see, a King Kong had a title run. You know, he, he had the championship for a whole year. I mean, not that I completely agree with, you know, someone just, you know, hogging the championship for an entire year. I mean, because that's basically what happened, you know. Um, you know, that's not my decision, but at the end of it all is sometimes, you know, people get overlooked because of the fact that, you know, you have, you know, these bigger stories to tell. And, you know, on this right, you know, it's been very unpredictable. Like, we had no idea, you know, about a whole lot of these turns, you know, that we were going to meet, you know, down the road, you know, gaining people and losing people and downloads and this and that. So, you know, it's just all a big, you know, discovery, um, you know, as we, are, as we move forward. I mean, you know, you always have, you know, uh, been very humble. Uh, you know, anytime you was represented here on XTV, and you know that's what's crazy is that you know, like you know B Boy because you you had to. The difference between B Boy and Sketch, or one of the you know big differences is, is that when B Boy came into XTV, he had to earn his stripes. Yeah, I started in the original NXTV, which was called GXT, because during that time we had NXT. Now we had we had TXG, so XTV was called TXG, and you know it's like how WWE was WWF, but XTV went through many different phases, and at this phase it was TXG. Myself and Roxy both, you know, applied to become a part of it, and we were lucky enough to become like the first, like like some of the first. Um, well, I wasn't the first, but Roxy was. Um, she was like one of the first creations on um, Smackdown vs. Raw 2006 and that's where we debuted but I made my debut on um, the fifth Smackdown I think it was Here Comes the Pain yeah the one with Brock Lesnar on it and um, I can't believe on a, it's a podcast and you just did a flex I, I can't help it I'm expressive touche but, um, yeah, so that's why I made my debut, and it's like, it's all these just random creations, like, just imagine, you know, you just decide one day to just create a wrestling division, and you're like, alright, one day I'm just going to binge, fucking create all these guys, and I was probably in that batch, it was this guy named Juice, you know, it's like, I, I think I think the reason that I stick stuck around and had longevity is because of Roxy, because and the fact that I was attached to her because 
you know, the thought is like, all right, Roxy has a brother. We're going to put her brother over here. He's David B-Boy. And, you know, he's going to, you know, break dance. And he does everything that Foxy does. But then he's just, you know, the male version. So you have two of them, you know, and it's like, you know, almost like the parallel universe because Foxy was mad over, you know, in 2006, you know, with all her dancing, you know, it was like the things that they allowed on that game as far as a moveset, you know, it was like completely crazy. And um, I'm not sure what they have now because, you know, I don't really spend a whole lot of time in that. I, I know I really should spend a whole lot more time in the, you know, um, in the moveset section, but, you know, I don't, but, you know, um, Anyway, that's that's how I got my start. Long story short, yeah, and you know people kind of, I mean, they 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 you know trash you immediately at the gate or nothing like that. But you did, you know, have to, you know, take abuse. I mean, it's like you had said, you know, uh, you you was immediately compared to uh, Miss Foxy, you know, uh, because of your dance style, and then you know. Uh, you, you was a tag team with her, you know. This is during the time where B Boy and uh, I mean, where men and women, you know, could be a team or fight up against each other. Yeah, it was so fun, and you know, then when that was over, I just thought it was like screwed. Like I'm like I'm ruined, you know. And I had to just go out and reinvent myself. It was so hard. I just continued to try and do, and I knew it was not going going to work because she already had that lane you know taking over the whole dancing flashy type of thing and so it's like you know everyone's called me wannabe and saying things like you know um i'm wearing her clothes and stuff and so i just bought into it i just like let it be like whatever you know what i mean i just play it cool but i guess you know the true b-boy came out i'm saying it yeah i mean you know people uh accuse you of being you know pretty angry b-boy it's a complete art head. Yeah, I mean, uh, I mean, I'm not an art head. It's just that, like, I, I feel like I'm, I'm extremely, like, you know, if you, I, I feel, I feel strongly about my opinion. That's that's all. That's all I can say about that. I, I feel really strongly about my opinion. Yeah, especially like in situations of like, like you know, I'm going to mention the killer man. Oh shit! I don't know why it why it didn't occur to me that this might come up. You no. Know, it's going to come up, man, because, you know, it's like any time you're standing in front of him, you know, you can't even get a word in or he tries to, like, challenge you with, like, oh, well, bring up a situation, you know, where I did this and did that. And that's why, you know, I was very happy when we had the face-to-face -face that time on, um, I, it was a pay-per-view, we had a face-to-face -face and here we are recording this, and I was so glad that we were able to document that so you can see how the killer is trying to be, and then how he really is. Because one thing about him, he cannot stop how he really is. And that's a jerk. He's a complete jerk. I thought that, you know, you and, um, that you and killer, you know, kind of reconciled. No, it's like this. There's no beef between me and killer. But at the end of it all, it's probably always going to be, you know, competition. You know, that's probably not going to be the very last time that you've seen us in the ring. I, I could probably say that, you know, but, um, and, and, and in that same breath, that's, the, that, that's why I want to put out, you know, like, Killer did put me over. You know, truth be told, you know, like, people say all these things about him, and they are all true. They are absolutely true. But on that night, he did make me, okay? I will say that. But at the same time, I beat you. And you know damn well that if you had beat me, that to this very day, mate, you would still be bragging. And you know that that's the truth. What do you say about all of this uh, sketch? I think it's funny as hell. Like, you know, I, mean, I, was, I was happy as, uh, um, as ever to see, you know, Davey win. You know, but at the same time, you know, I was just sitting back, you know, watching the whole thing and just enjoying it. You know, because, like, you know, B-Boy and, like, you know, everyone in my close circle had told me about, you know, exactly how, like, Steve was, you know, when I first started, you know, uh, came into the, into the game. And then, you know, they, like, warned me about, you know, people like him and, you know, people who are rivers and, you know, things of that nature. And I'm thinking to myself, you know, like, you know, it doesn't even matter, you know, if you don't make it look like anything, then it's not going to be anything, you know. So I just don't make it anything in my head. I just laugh at it. 
And, you know, of course, I knew that he was going to make fun of my voice, you know, and I, I didn't care. You know, I always left it off, you know, and just made no big deal, went out and just, you know, did the work. You know, the baby gets all upset. It's just oh, man. Little bit. Because he knows exactly what he's doing, man. And I just, you know, because here's XTV, and you've experienced it too, Justin. I, I know what you're talking about. I, I deal with it all the time, you know, with, with trunks. You know what I'm saying? He always trying to throw me under the bus. And then he'd be like, oh, you trying to throw me under the bus. I ain't trying to throw you under no bus. Exactly, man. But Killer doesn't accuse me of throwing him under the bus. Killer just comes out and he just says things like, Oh, I'm a baby face. I'm this and that, mate. I'm super cool, man. I'm the flyest baby. And I'm like, no, you're none of that stuff. You're trying to get this worldwide audience who's watching to believe in that, and I'm not going to let it happen. You see it all the time, mate. People coming out here, being fake superstars, doing things that you know, they would never do in real life. But they just want to portray themselves like that on the television just because the camera's on. And that's bull, mate. That's bull. And I'm not going to stand for that. I completely understand. You know, speaking of that matchup, um, you know, I don't I don't remember I don't remember um if anybody ever talked about it. I mean I knew it was addressed on the show, but you know, here in long form, uh I wanna discuss, you know, that that one part that that infamous moment when B boy you fell out in the middle of the ring and you know there was a legit concern for you. You know, uh, you know, it's like things kind of slowed down, and it was like, whoa, wait, what, what just happened? Like, wait, where do we go from here? Because it's still time on the clock. You know, uh, just take us back to that, uh, to that moment, and, and and what happened? I don't know what happened, man. You know, to this day, I don't know what happened. All I can say is, you know, um, it was explained to me that you know it was fatigue. You know, and that's what makes sense to me. I think that, you know, when you when you have your momentum on, because I think it was RJ Miles once on AOR and he had passed out. It was no, it was either him or JB. I can't remember. It was someone with initials. With a him or JB. I think it was JB. And he passed out, you know, and like you know, he was holding on to his head. And then he just went down to the ground. But you know, he continued the match, I think. And you know, I, I think you just get, you know, you get fatigued, you know, over time, you know. I mean, we, you know, like, my style is very fast-paced, it's very in-your-face, you know, it's very um, accelerated, and I do that to keep my opponents off guard, you know, I'll punch you, I'll kick you, I'll fly at you, I do all kinds of things to keep you off track and off balance. Um... However, the con to that is, you know, things like what happened. And I've felt that way before, you know, and I've just slowed myself down in the ring, you know. But, um, yeah, that's just pretty much what it is. Yeah, because, you know, I come from, like, a time, you know, like, like we mentioned, it's like none of that was on. So there was no stamina at that time. That didn't come in until, like, SmackDown 07. And then they started to add the stamina, and we would turn that off. But it's like, ever since we came back after, you know, what happened in, in 13, and then we came back in 17, we just left the options the way they were because we wanted to come across more realistic. And so that's why you have things like that happening. It was just uh, such a crazy moment, you know. I mean, what was you thinking about that sketch? You know, I was actually so shocked, you know. I was like, damn, you know. But at the same time, you know, I'm, I'm watching and... I'm knowing, you know, people is going to, he's going to keep going. I know that I'm hurt. He's not going to, you know, let anything stop this. You know, he really wants to win that matchup. And a lot was riding on it. It was almost as if it was a tie, it was a title match because of the way, you know, it was set up and, you know, everything that was going in and who B-Boy was going to wrestle up against, you know. Um, so, yeah, you know, I was definitely shocked when I saw it. But, you know, once I saw him moving and, you know, I saw him able to move his fingers, you know, and things like that, then, you know, I knew that he was going to be able to just keep going. So much so much meat on the bone with you guys. You know, uh, I wanted to wait 
with you. Uh, I wanted to wait to get you guys, you know, in here uh, and wait till you, you know, you got some some notoriety uh, here in the game, and you certainly have had that, you know, uh, so many so many off camera matches and you know that that, that have just been complete classics. And, uh, you know, I mean, with the tag team division being what it is, how do you guys, you know, stay a team and stay relevant? I think what it is, is that, um, it's like, you know, we want to always let our fans know that, you know, we're a unit. So even though, you know, Davey may have a singles match, you know, I'm going to be in this corner and vice versa. You know, so sometimes that's that's just what's in demand. And um, I think, you know, um, a lot of time we've always been, we're usually booked up against someone who also comes out with a manager or something like that. So that's fair. Not always, but, you know, we're not, I mean, you never see us interfering with one another's matches anyway, unless it calls for that. Well, yeah. I've 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 interfered. I've been thrown out. The hard hit. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Mamma mia! Pizza cake. Haven't chosen me to tell you about the new Corleone pizza. Soft white Italian dough, soaked in the finest Palermo tomato, all topped with one whole pound of Milano cheese. Then choose five toppings from the famous Pizza Cake 500. Mmm. And remember what Mama said, leave room for dessert at Pizza Cake. One of the great mysteries of life is the location of the great Loch Ness Monster, but never more. Nessie's kids can be found in your tea infusing it. Only $13.99 at vat19.com. You can give this darling little Nessie a home. These sweet creatures' only purpose in life is to infuse your tea, and they are helpless. They've lost their mother and only wish to have a new forever home. For just $13.99 at vat19.com, you can have this silicone dishwasher safe beauty of the deep in your everyday life. Um, when you guys first came in, you know, it was B-Boy, Sketch, Foxy, and Malia. You know, that, 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 at least in my eyes. I mean, am I right about that? Yeah, of course. And, and so, like, is, is that still the case? I mean, because, I mean, we know this whole NWN thing. I'm going to tell you, like, for a long time, Malia would not talk to us, but it was like around Christmas time, or like I think it was it was like Thanksgiving or something like that. She came around and she was like, you know, just showed up. Yeah, she's our sister, man. Right? Yeah, yeah, exactly. She's our, you know, she's the, the youngest of us all. You know, she's our baby sister. Yeah, she, she um, she's so, uh, you know, she was unhappy. You know, and you know she's she's not really happy. You know, in XTV right now. I mean, she came in with like a lot of promise and different things like that, and then you know, like sort of the same thing happened to her that happened to me, and I tried to you know get her to see it that way, but she she just has that drive to want to be you know a, a big big superstar, and you know sometimes it's not your your time yet. You know. I uh, heard about it, you know, uh, you know her woes, and you know I wish that I could, you know, reach out to her and, and talk to her, but you know I don't want to pressure nobody to do nothing that they don't want to do. But all I'll be saying is, you know, you know I, I feel like NXTV, I think it's like how FCW was. I think it's in its FCW phase because it's still got you know a whole lot more to grow. You know what I mean? You know what I mean? We we coming up on what episode what forty five, forty six, something like that. And with that being said, you know, with that happening, that that's still that's still, you know, just a little baby. You know, when you consider the grand scheme of things, you know, how how much bigger it's gonna be. We just a little old forty five. One day we're gonna be at a hundred forty five, two hundred forty five, five hundred. You know what I'm saying? And so that's what I just encourage people to understand. 
you know, not just in NXT TV, but in life. That that's just the way it is. It, it starts as a little baby. It starts as a little seed. And then, you know, like today, you know, as I'm recording this, you know, the XTV World Channel has 55 subscribers. And I'm happy about 55. Because I remember when we had 25. You see what I'm saying? And so that's that's growth. That's like when you put a seed in the ground. And then, you know, you start to see it sprout up. And you'd be like, oh, there it is. It's a little hair. And yeah, man. So that's, that's how I look at, you know, uh, this situation. And that's why I'm proud of you guys. You know, because you guys did exactly what you w- were set out to do. You know, the stage was set for B-Boy and Sketch to be you know, the supreme high-flying tag team of the division. And, you know, you pulled it off, you know, uh, despite the odds. And, and you know, uh, my, my hat's off to you. It's just that, like, I, I look at it, like, in my opinion, that, I mean, maybe it might be time to move on from that, you know, because it's like, I just wonder how long that can that can stay a thing, you know. And that's the thing, man, it's like, I just feel like as long as we want it to. I just feel like everyone always breaks up, man. All tag teams are always splitting apart. He always said the same. Like, ever since Shawn Michaels, and I, I, you know, correct me if I'm wrong. You know, like, maybe it happened, like, you know, prior to this as well. You know, I'm not talking about a, uh, a tag team, you know, breaking up or somebody turning on their partner. I'm talking about the way Shawn Michaels did it, you know, at the barber shop to my Janae. It's like, ever since that, you know, people have been trying to recreate that that sense of, like, shock. Because it was so shocking. You know, like, the Rockers were so over and so cool and so one that you never, ever, ever thought that, you know, one would turn on the other. At least I didn't. And I think most fans looked at it that way. And, like, so, like, now the status quo has been get two guys together and then try to, like, make them you know, try to break out one of the stars, oh, both of them. And it's like, nah, man, that's not what we're going to do. Both of us are going to be big, huge stars. You know, Sketch had his time, no matter what he says, Sketch had his time as the XTV champion, or NXTV champion. I had my time as the XTV champion. That meant a lot to me. And to me, that's us making our mock as one of the greatest tag teams to ever exist. You name it. Now think about this. The people in XTV, and like, I know that there's new fans out there, but like people who were fans, you know, way back in the day, they know that XTV had Baby and, and Ada and people like, you know, maybe White Fang and Sus or something like that, you know, and Big Trunks and, and Kanteru. People like that who are like, you know, but it's a very short list of all time great tag teams. That's what I'm saying. And it's like, we're going to change the tag team game one match at a time. One show at a time. Yeah. I mean, uh, it's, it's a journey, you know. Um, I mean, I've come all the way from the Indies, you know, like, like where we first met, you know, in Western School, uh, in Blackpool. And, you know, I really got, you know, like, I was really a big name over there, like, you know. I was really, really a big name, so I knew that if I could, you know, make it over there, and um, that, that I could make it anywhere, I think that the key is, like, it's just, like, seeing yourself as, you know, a star, you know, like, no one can tell you shit, you know, no one can be like, you know, oh, you're not worth it, or, you, like, you know, you know, you're not cool, you know, you look stupid, like, you know. Exactly, you know, people talk about my looks, you know, people always talked about my looks, they think that I'm going to get mad about that. I get mad over stupid shit, like, you know, fake shit. If you think that I look stupid, that's fine with you, you know, that's fine with me, mate. Let's not earn my feelings. It's all, you know, whatever, you know, a person thinks. I mean, you know, to me and my head, you know, nobody can really match my style. You know, you can't, you can't replace B-Boy in Sketch. You know, there's no replacing us. So, you know, we're here to stay as a tag team. That's super dope. I just want to see y'all, you know, like, really thrive this year. You know, and then... It's, it's tough because there, there are no tag team titles right now. You know, NXTV has no tag team titles, but there's a tag team division. And I say, 
with no tag team championship, there is no tag team division because there's nothing to contend for. So, what's what's even the point of having tag team matches? Terry Williams is supposed to come up with like XTV tag belts, and then hopefully, like you know, because we've been talking a long time about XTV having a tag team division. You know, you got Walter and Wells over there. You know, it's like, and if you exp if you expanded the tag team division. Like throughout XTV and NXTV, then you're creating more guys for there to be like you know a a championship you know um, division as uh, you know and it's like I've been had that idea. That's like that's what WWE is going to do now, you know, with the with, the, with their new tag team championships they have. They're going to expand the division and because they've had that same problem, you know, and that's how you do a tag team division. You know, that's how you make it important. Yeah, that's true, you know. And, you know, like, to ask you a question, though, it's like, it doesn't really matter that, that there's no champ, that there's no tag team division right now because I'm sure that, you know, they're not just going to book tag team matches with no intentions. And I think what it is is it's like right now you're getting a view of who's, you know, the good tag teams. So right now, like, really great tag teams can come out and prove that when that tag team opportunity, whether it's a trophy or whether it's a belt or whatever the case it may be, it's like now you can see that team deserves it or that team deserves it. Or these teams, you know, have great matches against each other. Yeah. You know? It has, it, you know, I mean, I get, I get that. You know, it, there, there is potential there. But, I, I mean, it's just saying, I'm just saying, you know, it, it comes to a point because, see, sometimes... Sometimes you know you just rolling the dice. Sometimes you book a match. You know, like like what happened with uh with you and um and Ricky Enziguri. And I gotta say, you know, I don't give a damn what nobody says. Sketch got Ricky Enziguri over. Sketch made people, you know, at least just turn their head and say, okay, what the hell's going on over there? You know, I appreciate that. That was actually, you know, the intent. You know, that was the whole point of me, you know, going up against Ricky because you know Ricky's phenomenal and he's like really got a lot of personality and a lot of. You know, um, in ring skills, you know, and really one of those ones who was projected to, you know, really hit a high, you know, high status. I think that everything happened so fast that he just got lost in the in the loop. But you know, he's really good. And um, it's the thing about you know NXTV. If you put in the work, you know, that's another thing I try to say, Emilio. Because if you put in the work, then you know you're gonna be successful. Like. All you have to do is, you know, just um, be patient, you know, and, you know, keep grinding. And, like, Ricky was always having, you know, consistently great matches. And, you know, they decided, like, yeah, you know, they figured they could use, you know, some of my power to, to help him, you know, get a bit of a rope. And, you know, it gives me something to do. It's completely different, so I was, you know, really excited about it because what people did not see is the matches that we were having, you know, and, like, on the... um you know, on the roundabouts um, from town to town. And, you know, they were really stellar and, you know, we were trying to duplicate it on TV and, you know, we did the we did our best, but, you know, I think that uh, undeniable, you know, we did, um, we did fine. You know, it was, um, I think it was a great open. It's, it's one of my favorite matches, you know. Um, I'm really happy for Enziguri and, you know, I, I just I just hope that this works for him. You know that that's a uh, that 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 means a lot. You know when when they like, hey man, we think that that if if this guy works with you, that that he can get over. I mean that's a big big task. You know, uh, and that, that's something big to carry on your shoulders. You know, a, a, as a character here, you know, in XTV, you know, uh, to to make somebody else matter. And um, you know, uh, my my hats off to both of you guys. You know, B-Boy, you uh, you became the XTV Heavyweight Champion. You know, you're no longer the champion right now, but you still got that rematch clause. And, uh, you know, we got Miami Beatdown coming up and XTV 5. <laughs> what are your thoughts uh, with the Heavyweight Championship situation? Because, I mean, I would I would imagine, and you guys tell me, it feels it feel like the... The title ranking system is is different between XTV and NXTV. 
Oh, but people want to know more about that. He's, he's done the XTV thing more than me. Well, I, I just think that... I think that it's completely flawed. Like, I get what they're trying to do, but I think that in XTV, they don't think about the stars. In NXTV, it's more like more about the stars. That's why somebody like Enzigiri, who's who probably, you know, is not people's favorite, can get, you know, the opportunity anyways. And that's the whole purpose of NXTV. You know, and it's not that I'm throwing a fit, it's just like, that's the difference. Like, it's more about the show in XTV. It's more about, is this going to be good? Is this going to come across good? You know, and screw how the person comes out looking. You know, or, or screw what situation that they're in. And that's how I feel about, you know, why did my first title defense have to be, first of all, so prolonged. And then secondly, it was put in a blatant elimination chamber match. What are the odds? Six to one of me winning that matchup. And I tried my damnness. And it's like, I can either play, it my, I play as myself or I can play as AI and just choose it as a gamble. Either way, I'm, I'm bloody screwed. And I lost the championship. And it's like, you know, now DT's prancing around as if he really wants something, you know. And I don't, I don't care how he takes it, Mike. You know, because he's a blithering fool. He's probably even worse than the killer because at least, nah, they're about the same. I take that back. They're about the same. Because these guys blather out their mouths and they say things and they don't know exactly what they mean. They just say whatever comes to their brain at the time. It's like, perfect example. On Westside Live, when the Westside did uh, an event, they went live. JNW Boss was complimenting Earl Joe for you know, his, um, his involvement and in the um, committee or whatever you know, to get voted for or whatever and all that. He was saying, you know, congratulations because he was talking about healthcare and all these different things, you know, for the West Side people. JNW says, congratulations. And then what does Zita say? You better be congratulating me. Listen to you, man. Listen to how you sound talking to a guest, talking to a fan. But these are the same people who want people to cheer for them, to actually like them. They're wondering why they don't get any views on their material. Because no one likes you because of your bad vibes, man. That's why. And you're a paper champion. And, and no matter who you fight up against next, whether it's me or Little Trunks or whoever's the number one contender, I'm going to get my spot. I'm not going to wait. Because I've waited so many years to become XTV champion. This is the biggest prize, and I'm going to make it mean something, man. And you're not going to do nothing. You're just going to sit up there, just like what King Kong, King Kong did in the NXTV Championship. You're going to do the same thing. You're just going to sit on the bench. You're not going to defend it. Case in point, if you go back, I don't know what episode. It was a Twitch episode. They played the, um, there was a, a press conference with Bobby and Brock Lesnar. And then DT stood up in the background, and he said that he would fight for the championship. He said that he will fight for the championship because Terry Williams says we need to know who's going to fight up against RJ Miles at XTV05. DT raises his hand. He goes, we can fight for the championship right now. As soon as they stop rolling, mate, they go, you, re you ready to fight for the championship? He goes, oh no, I was just saying that for the show. He'll try to deny it. He said that. <laughs> he said that. He said, I'm just trying to do it for the show. I just want to do it for the show for drama and all the hype. See, you get people like that who get their hands on the championship who don't believe in nothing, man. They don't believe in the company. I believe in XTV World. When I have my face as the company, I'm going to bring it with me. You know, I'm going to, you know, like, use my popularity to ha try to help the company and help us all grow together as the leader of the, of the locker room. But, you know, everyone doesn't have that mentality. A whole lot of people have a very selfish mentality. And that's what the problem is. I'm sorry, I don't even know what you said. Well, I, I was just asking about, you know, uh, your championship run. But, I mean, you know, I guess you summed it up. It's, it's ludicrous, man. It's truly ludicrous. And it's like I said. You know, and I get it, you know, yeah. With small, you know, awareness, infancy and all that. But still, 
more thought could be put behind things. Have you ever had a pen and a paper, mate? You put a pen and you put a paper and you have a plan. You write it down. It's frustrating. I, I get your frustration, B-Boy, because, you know, I put it on the, on the table. One of the things that I think about is, you know, you guys, the NXTV stars of today, and then the stars of tomorrow, and the way that this has to be this kind of a, almost a, uh, Almost, almost working like a conveyor belt. It's always stars coming in, and the stars moving up. And as you guys move up, you know, how does that matter? Because the stories that are that are told on NXTV, I I feel it's like what makes you guys, you know, uh, and it's like. You know, how does that translate on the main roster? Well, personally, I, th- I feel like, you know, that, that, you know, I think that we'll all help each other out. You know, just like the more you get over in, in NXTV, then the more you'll be over on the main roster. And then it's like, also, you know, so many guys are coming in who are characters of other people. So, you know, when those stars... You know, get a form bonnet. I, th- I think that that's what's going to be the new NXTV. You know, in the future, it's going to be made up of other people's stars, and you know, it's going to be intriguing to see who makes it to the main roster, and that's what's going to make it important. You know, it's like it's almost goes back to what you were saying. Things been in their infancy right now. It's like it, it doesn't look very promising, but as you know, things progress and continue to grow, it's just going to become its own thing. And the more, you know, people we interact with and, um, you know, um, have community with, you know, the more, the more it works. Because, you know, these stars want to see their stars. They want to see their stars in, in cool, you know, programs and cool matches and cool moments and have title runs. And they would like to see them, you know, potentially grow to a potential main roster. Um, I'm not sure, you know, how many people have that type of a concept, um, have like a feeder system concept in the universe, you know, some people probably just do one show, but I think that's one of the unique things, and it's like, also what's unique about, you know, XTV is that, like, the, most of the main shows are live, so you have to be right there on the spot, and, you know, um, when, it, when it comes to talking live, you know, and entertaining the crowd, like, it's like a whole different thing, so, you know, I definitely see, like, potential in it all, you know, and that's why, you know, that's why it goes back to me want to just, you know, bide my time and kind of retell my story, reintroduce myself and wrestle up against people like Ricky and Zaguri and, you know, have these great matches, you know, um, and then work my way to, you know, the All-American and then, you know, the heavyweight championship and things like that. But And, and definitely, of course, you know, um, have a reign, you know, in the tag team division. But it's like I want to touch all those bases before I get out. Like, I'm not in a hurry to to be on the main roster, you know, a lot of people are, you know, a lot of people think that that's, that's to be all indoor, and it's really not, you know, it's, right now it's a, it's a hard time to be in NXTV, I think this is where we should be, and this is a really great place to, to make your name, you know, and a lot of guys can make their names there. Very well said, you know, uh, I love talking to you guys, man, you guys make me feel very calm, tranquilo, <laughs> why do you think I chose him to be a partner of mine? Yeah, I had bl- bloody Ryan Vargas. I worked with Best. Best was also a great partner though. I really enjoyed teaming with Best because Best was the only partner I had that comes to mind that was on the West Coast, and that was like really a, a weird dynamic. And that's why I made sure that I always put Best over. And then like he thought, I think I've said this before, but he thought that like he thought that I was trying to like turn on him he thought that I was going to turn on him because I was putting him over so much he's like dude I know that you just put me over and put me over just to turn on me just cut the rubbish and do it already and I never turned on best we were the tag team champions we were part of the best foundation one of the my favorite things that I ever did in XTV and yeah he was a great partner because it doesn't always work out between east coast people and west coast people there's always a fallout 
And it wasn't that way with him. And so, like, yeah, you know, working with this was awesome. But this guy, you know, he just, like, he's got his head on straight. And he's very late for because he's very influential uh, for me. And, yeah, he just, you know, he really helps me keep my, my, my mind on the ball, you know. It's yeah. all about, man. I mean, you know, we... We choke, we laugh, you know, we have fun, we have a good time, you know. Um, yeah, and, and none, none of that stuff that Killer is saying about, you know, um, you know, these people not taking care of you, it, it's not true. <laughs> it's not true, it's not funny, it's true, man. I'm a grown man, I take care of my damn self, man. Exactly. <laughs> Before we get up out of here, uh, I guess, you know, in this little time that you guys have been here, and XTV, uh, you know, I guess, what, what more are you uh, looking to accomplish? Uh, starting with you, Sketch. Um, well, yeah, it's like I mentioned, you know, just, uh, you know, I just def definitely want to have, you know, tag team reign. And um, definitely want to build my name up. Definitely want to uh, explore being in, you know, other companies. You know, I'll talk to about other companies, you know, joining us here. But um, I would definitely like to, um, you know, be a part of other companies and get around. I definitely want to be, you know, a, a champion in another company. I think that would be so, like, awesome. You know, just break boundaries that, um, that you know, that haven't been broken and, you know, reach new dimensions. XTV is always moving forward and spreading out, you know, and um, I just want to, you know, like, try to enter every nook and cranny that I possibly can you know before it's all over I have a lot of ambitions and yeah I think that if me and B-Boy could finally you know be in one of those Dusty Rose classic um, tag team matches or tag team tournaments even if we don't win but I would really love to win I really want to win that's why you know I want to end the, uh, the best two years but you know anyway yeah so you know things like that B-Boy um definitely become champion I want to have, you know, a formidable title run. Um, I definitely want to be a, like, a huge team with Sketch. Like, I want to grow bigger than what we are, you know, and, um, you know, just bigger than you can imagine, you know, as far as a tag team. You know, um, I, I, I would also like to um, team up with Roxy again. I would love to see that. Like, if one day, you know, they start letting us, you know, have intergender matches again, you know, because I just love teaming with Roxy. We had we had the chemistry, you know, like like none other. Is is uh is is Foxy? Because you know, I mean, I watched your uh, podcast, you know, when he was uh, live, you know, with Millennium, and that was forever ago. That's when that's when Sketch that's when Sketch talked like this. And he never pushed it. He talked like that so much that now his voice is like this. Screw you, man. <laughs> But, um, you know, it was asked, you know, who was your uh, favorite teammate out of, uh, I think it was out of Bess and Foxy. You know, but out of Foxy and, uh, out of Foxy and Sketch, you know, who would you choose? But, you know, it's really hard, you know, um, to choose out of, like, any of the tag partners, except Ryan Vargas, he sucked. Now, that's, that's just a, um, a jab at him. He was actually really cool. But it just wasn't, you know, we just didn't mesh as a team. But um, the truth is, I think, man, you know, I, I'm just going to say Sketch. He's only saying, he's saying me just because I'm sitting here. I'm, I'm saying Sketch simply because of just how new it's been. Like, those team, like every other team that I've been with, They've been really, you know, every other teammate that I've been with have been really good. They've been really cool. But teaming with Sketch has been, like, a dynamic that I never experienced before. Like, we're, we're figuring out new things. And, yeah, like, we're experiencing the world, man. You know, we've got people all over the world who, you know, know British Airways. And that's cool. So, yeah. Oh man, well, awesome man. Uh, I've been looking forward to having you guys. Can't wait to have you again. I, I love, I love when you come around, uh, B Boy and Sketch. Man, you welcome here anytime. Thanks a whole lot. Thanks a lot. <laughs>
Thank you, guys. Always good time catching up with B-Boy and Sketch. Uh, two of my favorites, man. You know, I, I love B-Boy. I, I, I love the, the whole, you know, uh, British contingent of XTV. You know, I absolutely uh, just, just love them all. You know, um, of course, I want to wish the best of luck to those two gentlemen. So many, uh, you know, great things that uh, they talked about wanting to, you know, be a part of in the future. And, you know, I mean, I can see it for them. You know, uh, when you got outside eyes just looking at somebody in a picture and saying, hey, I want those two guys, you know, um, I think that that's something. And uh, Lord knows that there's so much more meat on the bone with B-Boy and Sketch. You just got to love that energy, you know, and that passion. And um, that's kind of like, that's that's what you get, you know, with uh, the NXTV guys, I believe. You know, uh, you sort of get that. You get that, um, I mean, because, you know, it, it, you know, you, you kind of peel back that, uh, you, you know, you, you go into it without having to worry about, oh, you know, is this person going to like me? Am I going to do a good job? I mean, look, it is, you know, a level of that. But, you know, with NXTV, this whole thing was built to give you a chance, to give you an opportunity, to give you a platform whereby you can get your shit off. And I, I love it. It's like it's it's completely, you know, changed the definition of what XTV is. And, uh, you know, I was talking to... Uh, I think it was Big Trunks or it was, you know, Best or somebody. And they was going, uh, you know, they was checking out like uh, XTV Mania from 2009. And just talking about just how just completely different it is, you know. And I mean, look, you know, that's 10 years ago. So that says a lot. Hopefully we're moving in the right direction, which I personally feel like we are. But, uh, you know. Time will tell that. Next week, uh, the very gorgeous and electrifying Don Carr is going to be joining us. Uh, really looking forward to that conversation. Uh, you know, here, here's somebody who's a you know completely different you know uh, star in HTV. You don't really see her that much. You know, you, you never see her on NHTV. She has been on Proven Grounds and she's doing a thing over there on uh twitch.tv on Sunday mornings. You know, uh she was uh first noticed by the West Side on an episode of uh Monday Night Twitch. I remember uh I think it was uh Trunks going, you know, who who is Don Carr? You know, and it's like you see, I was already familiar with him. You know, you know the West, the East Coast already, you know, get established with certain talents, and uh, it's just crazy. Like, you know, it just become an afterthought. Like, yeah, that's done. But they didn't know who she was, and it was just like cool explaining who she was. And I think that Duke Zender happened to be in the room. So there you go. Of course, you know, uh, Duke Zender's love interests. And, uh, you know, she's, of course, representing GPW. A whole lot of great things to talk about with Don Carr. You know, her relationship with Raylan now that, you know, she's accompanying Raylan outside the ring on GPW. And, um, you know, all the uh, fun things that's going over there on that program. So we'll be having Don Carr on the program next week. Uh, to will be talking about those great things and so much more. Uh, you know, lots of great guests on the horizon as well that I'm looking forward to. I don't want to speak on it just yet because, you know, it has not been made official. It is not in the can, so I'm not going to talk about it. But uh, I got I got some big ones. I got some stuff that, uh, you know, you keep on tuning in. You, I think you're really going to appreciate what we're putting out. And uh, I know you already do, and I appreciate the fact that you tune in. You know, uh, I, I, I always uh, am, you know, humbled anytime somebody says, hey, Justin, who's going to be on your next show? You know, but hey, you got to tune in to see. <laughs> But yeah, man, that's enough of that. You know, uh, another great episode. B-Born Sketch, two guys I've been waiting to get on for a long time, so I got them in. And I uh, look forward to seeing what they do in the future. And um, look forward to having them back, man. You know, who knows where this is going to take us one year from now. Or, you know, five years from now. Who knows? The possibilities are absolutely endless. Uh, endless. So, um, with that being said, I'm about to take my behind the bed because... Uh, you gotta get up and 
get it again. So from the sunshine state of Florida, this is your boy Ernest Justin Turkey Legs saying so long everybody.